Hey guys, Boris Lasso BK4. So welcome to the uh, weekly technicals for Euro dollar, dollar yen, and pound dollar for March 13th to March 17th, 2017. And if there ever was a day to celebrate the eyes of March, man, this is going to be the week. March 15th will be just the absolute blast off, not just only for the dollar, not just only for um the yen but for almost every other currency in the major spectrum we're going to go through this very very carefully it's just going to be really an intense and insane day basically the calendar sets up let me go to next week here here we go the calendar kind of sets up um and actually let me just uh i'm going to filter out only the most important events because you guys can really see um just how intense march 15th is so here's march 15th and of course, we have the UK claim account, which is an important component to um, UK growth. And it's been probably the only bright and shining uh, economic report out of UK. That, by the way, is going to be coming on top of the Brexit story, which is certainly going to be very important to how uh, cable trades. But apart from that, just on an economic basis, look at this. We have the CPI and core retail sales, which by themselves would be a very, very important economic um, data point for the dollar. But they're going to be completely overshadowed by the FOMC statement, which comes out at 2 o'clock New York time. This is daylight savings time still here. But then after that, we have the New Zealand GDP, the Australian employment data, and the whole thing gets followed up by the BOJ press conference. So the possibility for Dalian Yen to do like a kind of a roller uh, roller coaster move, totally possible on March 15th. It could be a very, very volatile day. Literally the whole month, uh, almost feels like the whole year is kind of, just centering in on this particular date. That's going to be very much the key volatility date. The rest of the week, most of the stuff um, is relatively uh, secondhand. We do have the BOE um, announcement, which is not going to be that, um, I think, different from, from anything that uh, came prior. Uh, and then, you know, end of the week, we, we finish up with Philly Fed and uh, U of M. So a lot of that is going to be much more anticlimactic. It's really all going to be about the Fed, the U.S. rate decision, and where we go from there. Um, as far as the majors go, the support resistance lines have certainly moved. What's interesting, by the way, is that the euro has actually risen, despite the fact that U.S. rates are expected to go higher. And the reason for this actually makes perfect sense. Um, it's not so much that U.S. rates are going to be tightening, because the market is already expected a tightening out of the U.S. It's the fact that the Europeans are now moving towards a tightening bias. It's the move amongst all the major central banks to a reflation trade, perhaps the only central bank that's still very much in a deflationary mindset, although it's moving closer away from that, is the BOJ. And that's going to be, of course, coming up right after the, uh, the Fed that night. But this whole notion that we've now passed the worst of the global financial crisis, deflation has been beaten, and inflation now is becoming exactly what the central banks wanted, a new um, variable in the economic equation. They're going to start um, to, to basically begin to temper the inflationary impulses is very interesting. And that's the reason why the euro took off, because basically Draghi said that they, uh, at this point, feel like they've beaten deflation. They don't see any further QE going on, and they're now starting to move their bias towards a more tightening move. Um, so despite uh, relatively decent U.S. data, we had the euro actually pop this week and coming up against some pretty interesting levels. The yen is the single most interesting story because despite great um, data, despite almost um, at this point 100% consensus that the Fed is going to hike in March, and despite the fact that the 10-year is a 260, which is uh, pretty much near the three-year high on the yield basis, we can't get up off the ground. The yen just cannot hold that 115 level technically. And that's a very, very important point. So we're going to be watching that with just both eyes peeled to the screen this week because this 115 point is going to be critical to determining whether the yen, dollar yen is in a true breakout mode, in other words, back to an uptrend, or whether the word just going to be failing again. And that's going to be a very surprising and perhaps even a uh, very destructive move to the downside if it happens. And last but not least, my least favorite major, or in other words, the one that I'm most bearish on, is cable. Cable still is, is trading and acting horribly because the data is, um, is not as good because the market is finally realizing that Brexit is coming. Brexit is going to be triggered probably this week. Um, and that's it. We're at a point of no return. Um, and all of these rosy scenarios about how the UK economy is going to just uh, perform super greatly somehow as an island of uh, bastion of, of capitalism are pretty much going to be debunked as a figment of imagination. Um, UK is going to struggle um, against a very, very uh, competitive marketplace, and uh, cable could very well go to parity when all this is all uh, said and done. For now, though, 
um, the critical level is going to be 120. That's what we're going to be watching as the uh, support resistance lines for this week. Let's take a look at the charts here, starting with the euro. So the euro looking very good technically, making a very uh, clean, clear W bottom here, you know, like almost a, a triple bottom test here. So certainly you, you got to basically believe that until 105, if 105 gets broken to the downside, yes, the whole technical formation is down, but you just have to stay strong and long here um, with a stop. I would say, I guess the realistic stop would be about 104.50. That'd be like the terminal stop. Uh, uh, and assume that we're going to be in a slow but steady path towards 108, even as the U.S. rates increase, because I think the bias here and the general economic conditions within Europe are quite good. So the the big thing on the uh, on Euro, of course, was the political weight, which is you know the weight of the the, the fear of the Le Pen uh, win. That still could be uh, an out of like consensus huge risk. But for now, the Le Pen win seems very remote. Uh, she's 20 points behind in second round voting. Macron has done a brilliant job of appropriating a lot of the reform language. Um, from her. I mean, essentially, she's running as a populist reform candidate, but Macron has done a very good job as coming in as an outsider. And as long as he can maintain that political um, reality, I think he has a very reasonable chance of winning. And if he does, um, then all of that risk goes away. And Euro really has a chance to maybe even bust through the 108s and come back to 110s, which will be a complete shock to everybody who thought the Euro was going to be parity uh, by the end of this um, uh, year or by the beginning of this year. So Euro technically looking pretty good. And uh, as I said, unless we break the uh, 10450s, you have to just simply buy every dip here as uh, long as strong as the trade in the Euro. Dollar Yen, um, the concern remains. I, you know, you still, despite good uh, non-farms, um, despite everything else, despite 100% probability that the Fed is going to hike, we can't get up above this 115. And I think the, you know, the, the, the most, the sort of the worst case scenario for bulls is Fed comes in, hikes rates, you know, Yellen says something mo modestly hawkish and the market just either doesn't believe her or sells off on a profit taking basis and they just flush this down, which could very well be a possibility. And if the 115 does not get taken out with force, and I really think at this point, you almost need to see 116 conquered in order to be convinced that the dollar yen trade is for real. Technically, it still looks good. You, you, you can't deny it. I mean, you, we have a series of higher lows. It looks quite good here uh, on a foundational basis. But the fact that we failed uh, consistently one, two, three, four, five times at the 115 should really be a big, big uh, uh, warning and a yellow, yellow flashing light to anybody who's long this pair. Uh, yes, you want to buy a dip. That is That does make the most sense fundamentally and technically. But beware that, it, that, that, that if the dip kind of goes through, I, I would say that through 1350 level, if we, if we break the 1350 level here, um, I don't want to be long this thing. I know that, you know, for all the right reasons, you, you could say, yes, but this thing could just flush all the way down to um, 111, 110 before it finally finds uh, a meaningful bottom. Remember, again, takes the um, escalator up and an elevator down. So when it when it falls, it can fall super hard, super fast. Um, 116 up to the upside, though, completely breaks above this massive resist line, and then we're back on towards the uh, yearly highs, the multi-year highs around 117, 118, and that certainly gives us a much better uh, cause for celebration. So uh, I'd be watching those levels very, very carefully before making any kind of decisions on trading uh, this week. Pound dollar, again, uh, looking horrible, st although finding, I think, the, the only um, negative aspect to, to the bearish bias that I have is the fact that we've had a couple of days of support ahead of the 2150. This 2150 very, very key. If Brexit doesn't, if Brexit gets triggered and we and we we're able to muddle through and not break through below 2150, you could change your mind and there could be a cable in, in this typical vicious short squeezing way could, could squeeze all the way up to 124. Still think on a long term basis this is very much a sell the rally rather, rather than buy the dip trade, but there's no there's no denying that cable could certainly squeeze short squeeze out just to flush out the weak shorts. Um, on the other hand, it starts breaking this 2150. I think the 120 becomes almost inevitable. That really becomes the super, super test here for cable as that is the uh, flash crash low, that is the um, gap down low, and that's gonna be a very, very key level against which the market uh, wants to run the, uh, the numbers. So be watching all those levels. This is gonna be a fascinating week, I think, of trade. Tremendous amount of um, news, tremendous amount of level, um, and huge amount of trading opportunities. I wish you guys the best of luck, the best of trading. Borch Lonsberg, over and out.